Alright, so there are a lot of dope webtoons and manhwa out there. Like we got the beginning after the end, the boxer, omni reader, freaking legend of the northern blade, the list goes on. But within this cluster, there is one special webtoon that I feel deserves way more attention than it's currently getting. People, this webtoon is like Kengen Ashura meets My Hero Academia, and it all takes place in Trinidad. Bro, what? So without much further ado, allow me to introduce you to one of the greatest webtoons you might have missed. Ordeal. So Ordeal was written by Brent Bristol. Funny story about Brent, and this I got from his Patreon. Ordeal was actually the final project for his art degree in university. He had no real plans on continuing it, but when he heard the overwhelming positive feedback from everybody who read it, he was like, oh shit, guess this is it, bro. So then he started continuing writing it and creating more characters, and now we have this greatness. So if it wasn't for all this positive feedback, we probably wouldn't have the masterpiece that is Ordeal. So Brent, appreciate you for creating this greatness and people who encouraged him, thank you. We, I, I appreciate you so much, bro. Anyway, Ordeal takes place in a world very similar to ours, but different because it's cooler. See, a long time ago, certain humans were hit with a random genetic change that led to the creation of a new species dubbed Chemios. Now, one thing that I respect about this whole explanation about Chemios is that from Jump, they let you know that overall, they are just better than humans. Like, no matter what power you have, because Chemios also come with powers, they call them talents, the webtoon tells you you already have heightened endurance, more strength than a regular human, more speed than a regular human, and a slightly faster healing factor. I like this because you get an explanation before you get thrown into the bullshit, you know? I feel like sometimes stories, especially anime, hit you with humans that could do Herculean things and you just kind of sit there wondering, how? Like, how the fuck did you jump off this building and land and not bust your kneecaps? Like, I don't understand. I've gotten used to it because I've watched so much anime that now sometimes you just gotta wait till a human does something crazy, then that's when you judge the power scale of this world. So when you get an explanation here and you're just told that Kimios are better than humans, I like it. I get told that Kimios are stronger before I see a Kimio throw somebody through a building without having a strength buff. Anyway, as you can probably guess, humans did not fuck with the Kimio starting out. They saw these superpowered beings and they were like, nah, 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 this is sus. Why do you guys have powers and we don't? So there's this whole human Kimio war thing that happened a long time ago. And from that, humans and Kimio started learning how to live together. I get more into the war, but that is a whole arc that we do not have time to get into. If you want to learn about that, I suggest reading the webtoon for yourself. Trust me, it is not a waste of your time. And by the end of this video, I hope you realize that. And now with all that background explained, we move to the first fight of the webtoon. So you know how in our world we have MMA, you know, mixed martial arts. In this world, they have MMMA, mixed, mixed martial arts. Same thing as MMA, except you have human fighters and you also have Kimio fighters. I questioned this when I saw it, you know, why would a human want to go up against a Kimio or go into a league where there's a possibility of going up against a Kimio? But now that I think about it, the MMA probably is boring as hell if it even exists in this world. So what's even the point? I feel like the humans just feel like I want to fight too. So I'm going to have to go into the mixed mix martial arts anyway. So might as well try my grit against these crazy super powered humans. But we're about to see how even without powers, you can still body these chemos. It's about to be lit. So this is an underground mixed mix martial arts match. And it's being hosted by the bro M paid. Obviously, I don't have to explain who this is supposed to reference. But bruh, my man's design is dope as fuck. Like I'm sure T-Pain would be proud. Enter the main character. Shay Hart. First off, Shay, I know we just got back about talking about somebody's character design being dope, but bruh, this man Shay looks so fucking cool. Like upon my first read of Ordeal, I was speechless when I saw him, son. Already, I'm like, oh shit, this boy about the business and I'm hyped for it. Also, he's got locks. I've got locks. I already feel a connection with him. We are we already like this, bro. He's not even real. We already like this. And the person Shay is going up against is some dude named Quill. He's a chemo and his talent is porcupine. He's basically Spike from X-Men Evolution. Y'all remember that show? That show was fire, bro. So the fight starts and Quill starts talking shit because, you know, he's a chemo. He's like, what is a mere human doing up against me? Discount Spike. But Shay, you know, we don't really give a fuck, bro. He starts using the full work on him, bro. He starts finessing on the dude, starts going in with the hits. And it's cool because you see a lot of things in this fight, bro. Like for one, I gotta give it to Brent again because this dude knows how to choreograph a fight scene in a webtoon, bro, because this shit feels like it's moving, like the pen Panels perfectly flow into each other. Even remembering it now as I'm recording this video, I vividly remember this 
fight feeling like an animated fight. Just goes to show you how amazing this guy's art is. Along with that, you learn a lot about Shay. You see that Shay is not just your typical random ass fighter who's just gonna power his way through. You see that he actually takes some time to figure out how Quill's power works, and then he makes up a counter strategy to beat him in the end, you know? And I much rather see these more strategic fights that actually make sense instead of since you would see in like, I don't know, Dragon Ball C, where you would just punch your enemy harder than they punch you. In this fight specifically, it shows that Shay has to work really hard just to get one hit in against these Kimios. Let me know how y'all feel about this, but to me, this kind of writing makes the fight feel a lot more worthwhile. It reminds me of the big brain plays you would see in Hunter x Hunter. And I don't think we need to get into how dope the Hunter x Hunter fights are. So we reach the end of the fight. Shay does this dope ass feint, switches it up into a fucking body punch, punches Quill out of his pants, bro. Like shit is crazy. And finishes him off after taking a bunch of spikes to the fist. Yo, it's this fight is so cool. And on top of showing what I said, it showed. I feel like it also shows what kind of character Shay is. He's brave, but he can also be pretty reckless. So we move to the next day. Enter the boy Tep. Now, in this review, we're not going to learn a lot about Tevin. Going to be real with you. But Tevin, first of all, he's a dope ass character. I also like his design a lot. And he's a Kimio with a fire ass talent. He's able to create animal hides and cover himself with it like an armor, bro. He's like a Zoan Devil Fruit user in One Piece. He can switch up modes. Like he has a rhino mode, a lion mode, other modes that I do not remember or do not know about. He's, he's a dope ass dude, bro. And he's always down to help you your boy Shay out, but it's not in an annoying ass sidekick sense. He's his own person. You know, he's, he has his own life. He has a girl. He's chilling, but Shay is his boy and he's always going to be 10 toes down for his boy. But Teb is here to pick up Shay to go to their gym, the Red Ember gym. They enter and here enters one of the dopest senseis in Webtoon history, Leo Thomas. Now, Leo Thomas is a war hero from that whole human versus Kimio war I was talking about. And by the way, his design in that war was clean as fuck. Like my man pulls up with a natural white dreads that just look immaculate. I fucking love it, bro. But after his time in the war, he later found Shay along with a bunch of other kids, including Tevin, who didn't really have a good upbringing. He took them in and raised them as his sons and taught them to smoke, which is why Shay is so good at throwing them hands. He's like a more gentle Genkai. Like, he's gonna fuck you up, but he's gonna be nice about it and teach you a lesson too. So, you know, you feel bad, you're in pain, but at least you got something to learn, you know, for later. Outside of Leo, all of his friends are, I feel like I'm repeating myself with this, but I need Need you guys to understand how fire these designs are, bro. I, this is the best way to explain it. They could all be protagonists in their own respective webtoons. That's how cool they look. Like, don't get me wrong. Shay, when he's in the scene, he stands out. Yes. However, these guys, their designs are so crisp. They're so detailed and different from each other that they garner their own attention. It's like their looks grant them Conqueror's Hockey. And while we're on the subject, I feel like now is a good time to talk about how dope the dialogue is in this webtoon. Like, the banter between Shay, his friends, and Leo Thomas is so natural like you don't even need to be told that they're friends or that leo thomas is like their father because you can just get that vibe from how they talk to each other for example in that scene where tevin picked up shay when shay finally pops out of his house tevin is like hey bro we ain't never seen your house before what are you doing in there selling drugs or when they get to the gym and tevin's like bruh sense is gonna be so tight when he finds us you were in an underground fight and shay's just like bruh your girl drives you around like a man child shut up these are perfect examples of the subtle art of showing and not telling i feel like it helps the relationships in this web tune carry more weight because you know instead of being told that two guys were friends for a long time you see that with their actions and you never have to question it anyways back to the story shay and tev walk in while leo is giving azam a lesson about how to better utilize his talent because leo's whole thing is to teach his students how to be more creative with their unique talents so after that whole training session which by the way another really cool fighting scene it's it's quick but it's nice. But after that whole fight, Leo calls in Shay and he's like, boy, what did I fucking tell you about going in these fights against these goddamn Kimio? So he's tight because Shay's out here risking his life for funds. We don't really know what Shay needs this money for, but it's for a good cause. I understand why he's doing this. However, I also agree with Leo, like you're fighting a losing battle, bro. Even when he wins, he still loses because of all the damage he accumulates. So Leo's whole point is that you gotta think about yourself so that you can like live a long life. Right now, I feel like Shay is at the very most in his mid to early 20s. So he's really
literally fucking himself over getting in these fights and damaging his body up to a point where maybe he won't be able to move when he's at Leo's age, you know? Oh yeah, especially because he's human. Yeah, he's, he's, my boy's gonna be crippled, bruh. So while Leo's giving his whole lecture, enter the antagonist or maybe one of the antagonists. I feel like this, he, he's the antagonist right now, but as the plot unfolds, more antagonists appear. But this is the antagonist right now, Rakash Rampersad. So this dude used to be a student of Leo way back in the day, but his unhealthy love for battle pushed him to challenge one of Leo's top students and kill him. So Leo was like, what the fuck, bro? You're kicked out. And Rakash was mad ever since. So Rakash's whole thing is like, I'm gonna show you what true power is, old man. He He's just an angry ass, vengeful old student. And the coolest part about this moment is how the whole squad, how the whole Ember squad stood up when this man Rakash invaded their gym, bro. These guys are like, what you want, nigga? Get the fuck out this place, B. Like the energy of this scene is so fucking dope. It's like Leo and the boys, fam. It's 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 lit. It's mm, beautiful artwork. I cannot I cannot praise this artwork enough, fam. Also, one other thing about Rakash that I forgot to mention. He was just recently placed in the top 150 ranked Kimios in the world. So while yes, he's an asshole, this man is strong as shit. So be careful of him. So after all that, Rakash realizes that he's not wanted here. So he's like, I right, you know what? I'll leave for now. But don't forget, old man, before you die, I'll have you acknowledge my strength. And that may happen sooner than you think. So right at that moment, I was like, damn, bro, they really about to kill off the sensei in chapter two. Rakash saying this is basically writing it down on the board saying, Leo Thomas is gonna die. It's over for our boy, fam. If you liked him, that's cute. He ain't gonna be here anymore, fam. With that, they finish his training and Shay has to the doctor, you know, because as we said, this man is fighting chemios. He's getting body. So this man goes to the doctor and people remember when I said that Shay, when he grew up, if he fought like this, he was probably going to become crippled. This man is in worse condition than we thought. I'm talking like broken bones, a punctured lung, nerve endings damaged beyond the point of repair. He's losing vision in one eye. Like our man is down. I don't even know how he went in this fight against Quill. He really went in there without full vision in one of his eyes. This man is crazy. So we find out basically that Shay is not in the best condition. And I like this part a lot because it makes sense. As a fighter fighting these chemios, you're going to get damaged to the point where you probably shouldn't be fighting anymore his doctor even says hey bro dead ass you should probably quit i'm pretty sure whatever you're fighting for if it's a person they don't want you dead but along with this feeling real it also builds worry and tension because if shay's like this now how is the rest of the webtoon gonna continue you know like this dude is in really bad shape. From what we're seeing, we know there's gonna be a lot of fights. Is something gonna happen where Shay is able to heal up or something? We're gonna find out, or actually, we're not gonna find out. If you wanna find out, you should read the webtoon yourself, cause it's fire. But after Shay leaves the doctor, we move back to Red Ember Gym, and guess who comes back for the smoke? This nigga Rakash. And the moment he comes in, Leo's like, I already know what you here for, bro. Bring it on. And they start going at it. But as you would guess, Leo starts bodying this dude, bro. However, because of that, Rakash's pussy ass nephew shot Leo. So now he has a bullet wound in his stomach and he's bleeding out. In Rakash's defense, he was mad because he was just like, I want to show him my full strength. Now this won't count as a real win because you shot him. But Leo is still on that ass. Also, I feel like I should mention this now. Leo's talent is called Ilios the Phoenix Flame. It basically allows him to create fire and do whatever the hell he wants with it. But the really cool thing, and this, this right here is like, I was already gripped at this point. The art, the fight scene, the characters, most of the cast is black and they look great. I love it. But this part right here made me think because I heard Ilios. And then later on, a character shows up who goes by Thanatos. And the manual talks about how Ilios and Thanatos are two of the four great talents. So seeing this made me realize these four great talents at the very least are based on Greek mythology. Like Ilios, I'm pretty sure is a play on Helios. And Helios, if you don't already know, is a Greek god of the sun. And then you have Thanatos, the Greek god of death. And that's all I know right now, even for like what I already read on my own time. Like I actually don't know if there are any other Greek talent chemo people out there, but seeing this, seeing references to Greek mythology, I was like, bro, I can't wait. When creators reference historical or mythological figures from the real world, from our world, I don't know why, it's just so fucking cool, especially when they put their own twist on it. Maybe it's the nerd in me, I, I don't know. I just, I'm gonna be real with you. I heard Ilios, I heard Thanatos, and my excitement just shot up the roof. I just want to bring that up and tell y'all how I felt. Let me know if you feel the same way, or if you are actually 
actually reading Ordeal. Let me know if you felt the same way when you got the Greek mythological references. Anyway, Leo beats Rakash, but the bullet wound is getting to the point where he cannot live anymore. So he's at the brink of death, but right before he dies, he yoinks one of Rakash's eyes out, like straight up gives him the Uchiha treatment. Rakash is screaming, Leo dies, but before he dies, he says Shay, which is gonna lead to something else that happens in the webtoon. So now Sensei is dead and the Ember Squad is tight because this was like their father, bro. And they know exactly who killed him too. This guy literally walked into our gym, talked shit, came back later and jumped our dad. Fuck him, we're going in for smoke. So they are on a path of vengeance, bro. And it just so happens that Rakash just announced another tournament in celebration for him being put in the top 150 ranked Kimios in the world. However, they could only put two people in. So they enter Shay, honestly, because of the protagonist. Also because Leo, from what I'm seeing, was the closest to him and also deemed him as the most gifted when it came to close combat. And because Shay is in, you already know the bro Tevin is going through too. So the next arc is a tournament arc. And to find out how it goes, you're gonna have to read the webtoon yourself. I really hope you guys understand. I fucking love this webtoon. And I feel like I can do what I can to show you how cool it is, but you will only be able to experience it truly if you read it for yourself. The fights only get cooler. We get even more powers. The plot gets even better. Like this shit is a very, very enjoyable roller coaster. And I feel like 100% of the people on this channel would fuck with Ordeal Heavy. So if you, if you got some room on your reading list, bro, check it out. Let me know what you think. And also for anybody who is already reading Ordeal, let me know how you feel about it. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Shout out to the patrons. Thank you guys so much for supporting each month. And special shout out to my $10 patrons, the A-Rank Hunters. Blake Roberts, Vamp Cinder, Third Dynasty, Broken Rosary, Daniel Gonzalez, Victor Garcia, Mustard Gas, Zach Haji, Curtis Clarkson, Jody Boy, Jakari Scott, and Sugi. Love y'all so much for the extra support. With that, be easy, stay lit, take care, Black Lives Matter, and don't forget, you can do whatever the hell you put your mind to. All it takes is practice and time. Peace.